spring has sprung. <laughs> and with that comes thunderstorms and hail and tornadoes, all that stuff that scares me. Yeah. It's 3, 337 in the morning. Storms like this are probably my least favorite part of living in an RV. I grew up in Florida and hurricanes are a big deal there, but you have plenty of time to prepare for a hurricane. Yeah, I grew up in Ohio and tornadoes were scary. I did some research and I looked on YouTube and I found a ton of videos about proofing your RV for hurricane season, but I didn't really see anything about, you know, thunderstorms and tornadoes. And I think that you have to be a little bit more prepared for than a hurricane because like you just said, you have a lot more time before a hurricane hits. If you live in an RV and there's a hurricane coming, just leave. Do your best to get the heck out. So we're gonna focus on severe storms and at the end we're gonna talk specifically about some tornadoes because where do tornadoes always seem to hit? Trailer parks. Mm -hmm. What do we live in? Trailer. <laughs> so That's it's why like I'm a scared. magnet. Yeah, I am terrified anytime I know that bad weather's coming our way. I didn't really like it in the house, but I mean, I wasn't terrified like I am now living in this RV. And it's not just tornadoes. You really kind of need to be prepared for any kind of severe weather that could be in the area in which you're going to visit. Right, I think it's important if you're visiting a new area for the first time or an area that you're not that familiar with that you take a look and see what is normal for that time of year in that area because maybe that area is known for flooding or thunderstorms or hail or whatever mm -hmm. know what might be possible in the area where you're staying yeah so we're going to have some general weather tips for you as it relates to rving because rving is completely different than a house obviously and then we're going to jump into severe weather so let's talk a little bit first about just some of the general tips the good thing is technology has gotten really, really good at giving you some tools to monitor the weather, the biggest of which is just your smartphone. Yeah. But you know, weather apps now know where you are. The emergency alert system is now all tied into the mm -hmm. smartphone system. So that's gonna be one of your best options right there. The only problem with that is, remember a couple of times in North Carolina, in the middle of the night, of course, my um, alert went off on my phone and scared the crap out of us. Mine did. His did not. There was a tornado about 20 miles away. What you doing? I'm looking for the tornado. The alert came across my phone and woke us up at 3.20 something a.m. But for some reason, my phone did not get anything. Well, and I've been worried about tornadoes all night before we went to bed because this line of storms had tornadoes. It's like three, 3.37 in the morning. Daisy didn't know what the heck's going on. Daisy's like, oh, we're going. Look at, for, she got all rained on. We're going there. for a ride in the middle of the night. Look at a pitiful puppy. I know. I'm okay that it alerted us and woke us up for that. Yours did not. Yeah. So even though it wasn't right in our area, it was close enough for me to want to get prepared just in case. Yeah, and that's one of our tips that kind of goes along with that particular tool, is when you get to an area, open up your weather app and it should go right to where your current location is. Sometimes ours gets stuck in like our last location and we don't really care about weather in our last location. Occasionally I get notifications for Belfast, Maine. <laughs> yeah. And we're in Texas. For weather apps, we like the Weather Channel app. It just seems to be the one that we use most often. Yeah, I know we, there are plenty of others out oh, there. There's, there's tons. Mm -hmm. uh, but the Weather Channel seems to be pretty good and pretty accurate. And we did pay for the version that has no ads in it just because we use it a lot and we believe in paying for that stuff. I, my, my, mine has ads again. Well, you need to fix that. You need to fix it. <laughs> he's, a, he's the technology. Uh, you should call your IT support professional. He's the IT guy for changing so lanes, he needs to fix it. I'll be looking for your call. <laughs> <laughs> we have two weather radios, one inside the RV, mm -hmm. and then we also have one in the truck. South at 24, gusting to 37. Now let's check on your local forecast for the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. Yeah, we keep one permanently mounted and hooked up to power right behind our TV, so mm -hmm. it generally accepts a signal and will go off if there's an issue. It doesn't tend to have too Problem many. Problem with that though is you need a connection. 
Well, not a connection, but you gotta have a signal. That's what I mean. Yeah. You, you gotta be within signal range of a NOAA broadcast station. And where those are is anybody's guess. I'm sure there's probably some resource online, but we'll usually get somewhere and we'll turn it on and see if it's receiving a signal. And if it's not, then it's not. There's not a whole lot we can do about it. I think especially this time of year during the springtime, you need to pay more attention and make sure that your weather radio is working. You might want to keep an eye on the local news for like the local weather yeah. updates and stuff like that. This time of year can be scary, I think. Mm -hmm. We also have a portable one that we keep in our truck, battery powered, and that way we can just fire it up if we do have to leave the RV and we want a weather radio with us. We or do we're have traveling that. and we know that we're about to approach some bad weather or it looks like bad weather, then we can make sure that we check that radio. Mm -hmm. Tonight, west winds surround 10 knots. Seas two to three feet. So we also have a portable CB radio, and that was actually on the recommendations of you guys. We don't use it just like while driving or anything. It's not connected to an external antenna. It's just a portable unit. Uh, and it's, again, just in case of emergencies, like a complete disaster somewhere, and say the cell towers are down, we've got a CB radio to at least contact somebody. We've used it so little that I didn't even know we had it. <laughs> break a one, break a one. This is the bandit, this is snowman out there. Am I hitting you, son? Bring it on. And four. This is new to me. Yeah, we have one. It's in the truck. Oh, cool. Okay. Excellent. We're even more prepared than I thought. <laughs> Riverfront, right there. Let's get into some general weather tips as far Did as Did you RVs. want to talk about the, the new device that we are going to get oh, yeah, and yeah, check yeah. out? So, duh, yeah. So we found this device online and it has decent reviews. We're not really sure if it works or not because we don't have it yet. Right. It's confusing because you see it listed in different places at different prices. So we have no idea if it works or if it's good or if we'll recommend it, but it's intriguing to me. Yeah, it's actually a tornado alert device and it, it doesn't use radio or anything like that, but it uses the same technology that they use to detect severe storms and tornadoes from space. I guess they, it emits some kind of radio frequencies from the, the dust and the spinning or something and like supposedly that. you're supposed to get alerted to the tornadoes before you would get alerted like by the mm -hmm. news and stuff like that. Again, that's the claim. We don't know, but the cool thing about how we do things is if you're watching on YouTube, check the description below. If you're watching on our blog, check down below on the blog post. We will put an update there after we've had a chance to try it out to let you guys know how it does. It's called Tornado Alert and we did order it off of Amazon. The thing is, I'm kind of hoping that we never have to test it out <laughs> yeah. because then that means that there's bad weather, but we will more than likely have the chance to test it out at some point this spring and summer. So we will let you know. Yep. If you go to their website right now, it says to buy it off of Home Depot and it's like 140 bucks. I saw it on Walmart for 79. It's on Amazon for like 85. So yeah. who knows? We don't know. We don't know anything about the manufacturer. We don't know anything about the company. We're not partnered with them, obviously. Yeah. It's just the only thing of its kind that we've seen. So it's interesting. If you have any experience with this product, let us know in the comments below. Mm -hmm. We'd love to hear it. All right, next we're going to talk about wind. Yeah, wind is something you want to keep an eye on just in your general day-to-day -day practice of mm -hmm. RVing, whether you weekend or whether you're full-time, you always want to keep an eye on the wind. And a lot of that is because of these awnings. A good gust of wind catches your awning and it's just gonna, it's just gonna tear it up. So it's always a good idea to bring your awnings in with any decent amount of wind, eight, nine, 10 miles per hour. Well, now we keep ours, when it's out, it's usually tethered to the ground mm -hmm. because our screen, whatever you call that thing. Yeah, it's just a screen. Mm -hmm. It's a little, little drop shade screen that you've probably seen in our videos hanging off of our main arm. Yeah. And we'll leave that out and tethered down with bungees so it has a little bit of flexibility. And our cutoff for that is usually about 14 or 15 miles per hour. We'll bring it in. It's usually about 12 or 13 and I'm like, I think we need to put the awning in. <laughs> That doesn't sound good. That doesn't sound good. That's usually me. Sometimes it depends on the direction of the wind too. I mean, if the wind's coming straight across it and making it flap and buckle, or if there's a, an updraft wind coming through, you know, you just gotta, gotta use some common sense yeah. there. Also, one feature we do have on our awning on our main slide here, not the slide topper, but the awning on the slide, 
is it has an auto retract feature. If it detects some buffeting motion like this, it pulls itself in. Our other three do not. So you just be aware of what type of awnings you have. If you're leaving for the day, just bring your awnings mm, in. Definitely. We actually got this question the other day. He asked if we bring our slides in in bad storms. Yeah, it has to be really, really bad. Yeah. It might depend on the direction too, because we were in New Mexico last year and there were like two or three days of 40, 50 mile an hour winds. And the direction in which they were coming was causing our, our slide toppers to flap and they ended up tearing. Mm -hmm. So if the direction is making them flap or doing something weird, it might be a good idea to just bring that slide in during the heavy winds. Can't hurt. So what about rain on the awnings and of course, you know, the rest of the RV? The awnings are really the weak point. If you have asked your manufacturer or asked around online, the official line is always that these awnings are for shade only, just to provide shade from the sun, no wind, no rain. We've had pretty good luck with ours in the rain though. But we keep ours Slanted. at an angle. Yeah. I remember back in the beginning, I was like, our awning's crooked. Something's <laughs> wrong with our awning. It's I didn't even I did realize it. that you did it on purpose back in the day. Yeah, definitely. If you're gonna have your awning out, even with a chance of rain, you wanna make sure you slant it. And each arm has an adjustment. You just wanna adjust one of them down a couple clicks from the other one. That way it angles and lets the rain run off. Otherwise you're gonna get a pool of mm -hmm. water in there. Yeah. And even our awnings that are slanted like that, if we don't have them all the way out, we have them up a little bit, they can cause a pooling there mm -hmm. also. So be careful that, you know, as that water collects, water is eight pounds per gallon. And if you get several gallons up there, it's just gonna bring that awning down. And for us, our patio ramp door here is the new Lipper weatherproof door. They call it weatherproof. We still, if we know we're gonna have like a lot of rain coming, mm -hmm. we're still gonna close it up. Just just because I think that's the best thing to do. It's also, supposed to be weatherproof now, I don't know. Yeah, so far it's held up pretty well. We, we'll leave it out in light rains, but like she said, if it's real bad, not only to protect the, the deck, but to protect our glass doors and all that stuff, and wind might be blowing in and blow some water in, it's a good idea just to close it up in heavy storms. So let's jump into the severe weather, the juicy stuff. The not, the not so good stuff really, True. It can be is, really is, bad. What it, is what it is. As we mentioned earlier, if you're in an area that is unfamiliar to you, do a little bit of research and just find out kind of what's common. So is it common to have a lot of rain? Is it common to have severe storms, tornadoes? Are you going to the bank of the Mississippi and floods. it's that time of year where you have floods? Mm -hmm. We've seen all of the above online. Yeah. Just a little tip, you might have seen our RV trip planning video. We use RV Trip Wizard religiously. We still use that. It's actually got a weather tab on there for each location, and they'll give you some basic information about the highs and lows for that area, average rainfall, and all that kind of stuff. It's pretty cool. Link below. One thing that we do anytime we get somewhere new is to locate the closest shelter to where your RV is parked. That is something that we like to do when we first get somewhere new. Um, just like yesterday, we just pulled into this park. We're in Texas and it's spring. I wanna know where the closest shelter is. So I asked the ranger up at the guard gate when we checked in. Mm -hmm. In case of a bad storm, where is, is it like the bathhouse? Is that where they you- They usually go to the bathhouses and there's three. There's one on the main drag, that's a real big one. Okay. Mm -hmm. then, no, that's probably the best one. Okay, I like okay. to ask, this time of year I like to ask. You don't want the one on the water. No. <laughs> no okay. I'm with you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We found the one that's closest to us. We know that we can either jump in the truck if it's really bad, or we can just, it's pretty close. Yeah, it's, yeah. know where it is, know how to get there. Know if you have to get in the truck to get to it. Like in North Carolina, we would have to go down a steep hill and go around. So we would get in the truck every mm -hmm. time that alarm went off, which was several times, <laughs> yeah. and we would have to drive down there. Mm -hmm. If you know severe weather is headed your way, make sure you have enough fresh water on board to mm -hmm. last you for several days. Make sure you have enough fuel for your generator. Yeah, also, plan for the worst. when you hit the road, you wanna make sure that you have insurance coverage for weather damage. Yeah, check your policies, make sure it covers all the good stuff. Hail, tornadoes, tree limbs, all that stuff. He keeps calling bad weather good stuff. <laughs> And I keep correcting him on that. <laughs> All the bad stuff. Yeah. It's also a good idea to have surge protection just in general for bad RV and power and not just surge protection, actual total power protection, but that's kind of another topic. We did a video on that, mm -hmm. but 
for storms, definitely at least a surge protector. And if the severe weather is approaching and you're getting ready to maybe take off, you might want to disconnect your power just to be safe. With the surge protectors, they do have the external ones, which is probably your easiest bet. And then they also have the internal ones like Chad put in our RV, but our friends at Techno RV sell both of those. So mm -hmm. we will put some links below. Yeah, Surge Guard makes a really, really good product. We talked a little bit about, you know, your average winds and what to do and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Let's talk now about severe winds. No like bueno storm, in the RV. Yeah. One of the big things is, again, keep an eye on the wind forecast. Most good weather apps will do that. There are also some good apps that are specifically related to wind that mm -hmm. you can download, and it gives you forecasts and things like that. A couple of things I've mentioned is if it's really strong, like 50 mile an hour winds, good idea to bring your slides in, stop the slide toppers from being damaged, but also know your cutoff for travel. And it's gonna be different for every type of RV. I mean, like a fifth wheel like ours is much more stable than like a travel trailer. Your class A might depend on what kind of suspension you have. You know, a lot of the gassers don't have the air ride suspension. They're not quite as firm riding. Might have a little more wobble to them. I can't tell you every kind of RV and what you should do, but know your cutoff. I know for us, we feel pretty comfortable at 25 miles per hour under towing. We don't feel comfortable winds. at 25 miles an hour. We're ready to go to the next spot. If it's going to be 25 or below, we're okay. Gusts, probably 35. Oh, I thought you were still talking about driving. No, I am. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because I'm not comfortable driving at 25 miles an hour winds. That was our cutoff last year, and we drove in like 22 mile an hour winds. But I'm not comfortable. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> yeah, I, I get that. But that's our cutoff. And her comfort cutoff is around 18 miles an hour. Yeah, that's about right. <laughs> You've got to get further ahead of it. I know what I'm doing. Cut across the field, Bill. I know I have to get ahead of it. You're going to have to get into the field. Do you want to drive? Probably the best advice I can give in terms of what your cutoff should be when you travel is go on like a Facebook group for the manufacturer of your RV and ask what everybody else does. That's kind of what we did at the beginning also. And it'll give you a feel for what other people are doing in your specific RV. Yeah, if you don't wanna ask, you can actually do a search for that topic mm -hmm. in those Facebook groups too, in case it's already been answered several times. <laughs> and if you don't see it, ask the question. Absolutely. And then when it comes to hail, there's not really a lot you can do. Stay inside, don't get hit with it. Hey Mike, I got dibs on top of. <laughs> Shut up! I mean, you can definitely pull your slides in. That'll help protect the top of your slides or your slide toppers, whatever you've got up there. Mm -hmm. One less surface to be battered by hail. Yeah. But there's not a whole lot else you can do about it. It's not like it's gonna rip your roof off, but it might get some dents and damage. And again, make sure your insurance policy covers it. Okay, now we're gonna talk about my biggest fear, tornadoes. It's a twister, it's a twister. And it's become mine too. I don't I don't take them lightly by any means. You kind of, I don't wanna say you took them lightly in the beginning, but you take them more seriously now. I do, and I he love He always thinks a good that time. I'm over, over parano <laughs> overly paranoid about everything, but, for me, when it comes to storms in the RV, I, I'm not messing around. And since day one, I've kind of been prepared. And now you are too, mm -hmm. but it took a while. Took a little, took a little convincing. Mm -hmm. I do take it much more seriously now. I know I grew up in Florida, so I love a good thunderstorm. Yeah. The lightning and the thunder, just all day, I just love it. But tornadoes are no joke. No so, joke in a house, let alone in something like this. Mm -hmm. So we make sure that we are as prepared as we possibly can be. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is just to identify what you have in your RV that you cannot lose. Yeah, if you wanna have a checklist in your phone for in case of emergencies, do that. Absolutely. I mean, you know, then you won't forget anything. So we create this list just assuming the RV is going away. It's gonna just, poof, it's gonna go off to Oz to see the wizard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I am Oz, the great and powerful. What are the things you wanna have with you? Important documents, passport. Daisy. Doggies, kitties, the things that they need, some food, yeah. some treats, mm -hmm. things like that. For me, my medications, I mm -hmm. wanna make sure that I have those. 
right? Uh, a basic little go kit with like a toothpaste, toothbrush, some basic clothing. Mm -hmm. You put all this into a go bag, that way you're ready to go. We also pack up our important tech devices, all of our computer stuff, oh, yeah. our camera bags, yeah. um, all of that, because we've got a lot of equipment that mm -hmm. we wanna make sure we have with us. Those are certainly secondary, but heck, this yeah. is this is what we do. We film stuff, right? So right. If we we're gonna choose one bag, it's not gonna be the camera bag, it's gonna be the bag with the important documents and the medications yeah. and all that. Daisy, documents, toothbrush, cameras. Food. <laughs> <laughs> when you know severe weather is coming, you freak out like me. <laughs> so we take that list of things and we pack our bags and we put them by the door. Everything is just there, ready to go, just in case we need to go to DEF CON 2. Let's go to DEF CON 2. For example, just last week when we were visiting Eric and Tammy from Techno RV down in the Mobile, Alabama area, we had four days of bad weather that was mm -hmm. predicted to hit that area. So we packed a bag on the first day and we left them there sitting in the living room. In the way, of course. It, well, yeah, because it's an RV. For our storm preparedness protocol, we are packing up our important things, getting our stuff together just in case we need to evacuate. We're currently moot stocking with Eric and Tammy of Techno RV. Here you can see their RV right there. They are currently at the office, but have given us the code to get into the house if we need to, which is of course our storm shelter right out there. We left them packed and ready to go just in case until the that weather forecast cleared up and mm -hmm. we were in the clear. DEFCON 2 is or tornado watch, right? Is it right? I always get watch and warning mixed up. I don't know why. You know, you got the little box that they publish and say this area here is, you know, the conditions ripe. are ripe for a yeah. tornado action. Exactly. Mm -hmm. If you're in that box or anywhere near it, maybe take the next step and get your bags in the truck, uh, have them you know, double checked, make sure they're ready to go. And then if you see anything bad, hear a train coming, get. Get. If you get the tornado warning. Which we get at like 3 a.m. They always happen at 3 a.m. Just Seriously. go, go to your shelter. Don't worry about staying with the RV, just grab get out. Grab your bag, because hopefully it's, it's already packed up and ready to grow up. go, so you just grab your bag on the way out and mm -hmm. get. And that's really it, guys. It's not super complicated. It's just all about preparedness and thinking ahead. Yep. ABP. Always be prepared. Always be prepared. Mm -hmm. Make sure you have your bags. We want to know what you guys do to get prepared for bad weather. Mm -hmm. So put your answers in the comments below so that everybody else can read your comments and hopefully we can all help each other out. Yeah, Again, if you've tried the tornado alert, we want to oh, know yeah. about that. Yeah, we get a lot of good ideas from you guys. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if we've missed something, by all means, please tell us. Yeah, you guys are pretty smart. Stay safe out there. See ya.